Greetings everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. And in this lesson we want to talk about a specific technique called haloing to make your symbols pop and keep them from getting lost if they're on top of different things that are similar colors. Very important technique and really adds a level of professionalism to your maps. First of all, I'd like to remind you that I really hope you're taking the time to organize your map into layers. That makes it very easy, as I'm sure you've noticed, to lock a layer you're not working with. That way, when you're trying to select things and change things, you're only selecting and only changing exactly what you want to work with. Very, very handy. It'll speed up your cartographic process. But also, once you've got this organized into layers, it's very, very easy to start swapping around the layers to make sure that the things that are supposed to be on top are on top and make sure that you've got the order exactly how you want it. Like in this case, as you can see, I've got roads on there and also my cities. But there's a problem in the fact that my roads are sitting on top of my cities. If I did not have this organized into layers, then I would have to go through all of the different roads and send to back and then try to grab and select the, the cities and bring them to front and organize. But if I have all of these organized according to layers, I have all of my cities in a layer right here. I have all of the roads in a layer right here. All I have to do to make sure the cities are on top is move the cities layer on top of the roads layer. And now I have the uh, road sitting beneath all the cities. You can see the symbols, and that's exactly what I want. That's a very quick and easy fix. If you're organized in your layers, it is a very painful and time-consuming fix if you're not organized according to layers. So please, please, please make sure that you're taking the time to organize your project here according to the different layers. Okay, let's take a look at haloing. In order to give you an example of the need for haloing, what I did was I went ahead and made a copy of the land and uh, made it white with a big black border. That way you can really see uh, the technique that I'm trying to show here and the reason why you would need it. Let's take a look down here at this island. You can see that I've got a, an old fort uh, my tower symbol here on the edge of this island. And I've also made up some battle symbols with these crossed swords, and I put one down here. But you can see, at least in this example, and I exaggerated the outline for the sake of this example, that uh, because those are black symbols and they're sitting on top of a black line, they're getting lost. You, this occurs as well even if you have dark symbols on dark backgrounds, even if it's not jet black sitting on top of jet black. This can occur anytime you've got a very dark symbol sitting on top of a very dark color. Well, we want to make sure that you can see those symbols. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that by haloing. I'm going to come down here. See, you can see that it's, it's messed up. You, you can't tell what's going on down there. I'm going to halo both of these symbols. Let me halo this tower first. Let me show you how it goes. Okay, I'm going to lock that base land and then go over here to my fortification layer. That way I've got it. Now these are symbols that I just drug onto the map. But what I'd like to point out, if you need to alter it, I'm going to make a copy of it and paste it. If I right click on it, now it's still a symbol. I can say break link to symbol if I need to adjust it. And so if I do that, now this one right here is no longer a symbol from the symbol palette. Now it's been broken down into all of its component parts and I could go through and I can see now it's now it's just the drawing, the original drawing that I had and no longer that single uniform symbol. That's what I want to do in order to create my halo. I'm not going to need the interior there. And actually I'm going to use the Unite tool on the Pathfinder palette in order to make it just that outline. I probably should have done that to simplify that when I created that symbol, because there's no reason to store all of that extra geometry when all I want is that outline. But now I've got uh, just the back outline of the tower there. And what I want to do is I want to put a, a thin white line around the tower right there so that you'll be able to distinguish it from the uh, surrounding line. The way that I'm going to do that is by taking the back of the tower right here and giving it a stroke. I don't want to scale it. Some people when they go to create halos they want to go scale the object. But that won't work. That's not the technique. The technique for haloing is to increase the stroke. And I'll show you the differences here in a moment. Here is the stroke being increased. How much you increase the stroke is going to depend on how much of a halo you need for your particular symbol. This might be good right here, we'll check and see. It might be a trial and error kind of thing. I want it to be white, so I'm going to make the outline of the stroke white, and then I'm going to send that to the back. 
and then make sure that my symbol and its halo are aligned. Now you see I'm not losing that symbol on the black. I've got that white outline there so that it's distinct from that black edge and really makes that symbol pop out. It's not getting lost. When you see maps that are not properly haloed, you know that uh, it's an amateur operation. Making sure that your symbols, when they need to be, are haloed like this is an important aspect of making your cartography look professional. You can blur that. A lot of the times you will see the halos blurred. I'm going to apply one of the Gaussian blurs. Might blur it a little bit. I can preview here. Make it a little bit hazy. You can adjust how much you want it haloed. You see that a lot on text as well uh, to create this uh, sort of haze around, but still make the symbol distinct from the surrounding area. Let me show you what would happen. Let me compare. I'm going to make a copy of that. And let's compare and see what would happen if I chose to just scale that. I'm not going to get the right look, but I'll go ahead and show you. I'm going to copy it again because this is what I'll make the halo from. I'm going to break the link to the symbol. I just need the back. United. And I might say, okay, so let me turn the interior white. And what I need is a slightly larger symbol here. So I'm going to go to Transform Scale. You're not going to need to scale it up by very much. Now I have a slightly larger tower, and then you might, oh, now all I have to do is align it. Well, there, there's a perfectly aligned tower on that larger white. You might think, oh, well, then let me increase the size of the white. I didn't quite get it. Let me scale again to 115% again. You might think you're getting closer, but you're not. Even when I center this tower inside this larger tower, you can see that's not the halo effect. That's not the halo effect. What the halo effect is, is increasing that stroke, and that will build up that border around the tower. You don't want to scale your halos, because you're not trying to create something that's a magnification of that symbol behind it. You're just trying to increase that border, and increasing the stroke increases the, the border around the object. The increasing the border around the object at the exact same size, this isn't the effect. You can tell that's not the look that we're looking for. Let me go over here. You can definitely tell this battle symbol is getting lost. I'm going to duplicate it and do the same thing. I'm not going to scale it. I'm not going to scale those two crossed swords. What those swords need is some stroke. Notice when I created that symbol, I created that symbol specifically to allow this to happen if it needs to. I didn't put any kind of stroke on it. You'd have to increase the stroke if you did. But I created uh, that symbol without using any type of stroke. Those are only filled in polygons. That way, when I, if I need to halo it, I can just increase by uh, maybe, maybe two points. I'd have to look and see exactly what's great. For this particular circumstance, arrange, send to back. Now I group them, and now, notice that since I did it that way, now I really can align. If I use my alignment tools, notice how that perfectly aligns? That's exactly what I'm looking for. When I did it the other way and tried to use the scale, even when I went to the alignment, it wasn't lining up. It wasn't the effect. That's how you can tell. But here, when I went to the alignment tools, it aligns perfectly, and now I have the haloed sword symbols to go there and they'll distinguish themselves. You could blur that as well if that's the look that you're looking for. Haloing your items can take a lot of time. You don't have to halo them individually though. If you realize this is something that needs to happen, probably a fantastic idea would be to go ahead and build the halo into the symbols. That way the halo can be stored with the symbol and then when it's drug out to the map it already has the halo on it. That will save you a lot of time. Of course, you could also create halo and non-haloed versions of all of your different symbols as necessary. So if you need a haloed version, you drag it out. If you need a non-haloed version, you drag it out. Before I go, let me also give you a brief example of haloing text because this is very important. When I'm putting in my labels and my text, I like to be sure that the text labels are the top thing on the map right below that upper frame that's crisping off the top of the map and maybe the titles and other things that are supposed to be laying on top but actually the, the mapped information you want to be sure that the text labels are on a layer that is on the very top because it'll be very important to make sure they are laying there on top very easy to read but it's very often the case that you need to halo text 
take a look at this situation over here. I just drew in an extra road for the example. I've got this city there, and then I've got the name of it written off to the side, but as you can tell, it's very, very difficult to read that name, impossible to read that name. Even when I zoom in, I've got this name laying on top of a bunch of different roads. It's a black word. i got black symbology right here. Probably, actually, this may need to be haloed as well to make that city pop, because it's getting a little bit lost with the black lines as well. But let's work with this text right here. How can I improve it? This text must be haloed in order to be readable. Let me show you how this improves its readability. Again, you don't want to scale that. Some people will think, okay, let's see, I need to create a halo here. So let me create a white inside. And then if that was a 12 point font right there, maybe I need to halo up to maybe a, a 16 point font. Huh, wait a minute, send that to the back. Well, that's not right. That's that's not what we need, even if you come over here and try to align it. Uh, that's not working. That's because you don't want to adjust the size of the font. That would be the, the same effect as scaling we did last time. If it's 12-point font that you're trying to halo, your halo should also be 12-point font. Okay, what you're trying to do is make it a little bit larger by increasing the stroke. You want to increase the outline around it. See how it's getting fatter? It's still the same size font, it's still 12 point font, it's just getting fatter. And if you reverse it, aha, see that is the halo effect. You can halo it as much as you need in order to make it readable. That Increasing that stroke makes it fatter, that's what you're trying to do. Let me go one more, wait five, and now you can always get back by using the align tools and making sure that your halo is perfectly aligned. I'm going to zoom back out. That's already much easier to read, you see. Also, you see maps that have been published where it should be haloed and would make things much easier to read and it hasn't been haloed. Must be haloed in this particular circumstance, especially since it's on uh, black on top of those black lines. This makes it stand out. Much more readable, much more professional. I might be tempted to go ahead and blur that. You might not have the preview on your blur tool. Previous versions of Illustrator used an older algorithm to generate this blur, which took a lot more computation and couldn't be done on the fly like this, but they developed a brand new algorithm for computing this kind of blur, which is much, much faster and even allows it to be done in near real time, which allows you to preview it, which is really, really nice. But if you're using an older version of Illustrator, you might not be able to preview the blur this fast. I like that. I would also, I drew in this line just to emphasize, but here I don't like the, uh, the black line going over that road. But I do like that halo effect. Looking pretty good. And so that's haloing. Very, very important. It's going to make your symbology and your text much more readable, and that's really a very important quality of a professional map that's publication quality. So we want to make sure that we pay attention to details like that whenever we're producing a map.